Welcome to the Sunday Reach by Indian Dominicans. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, Today our scripture readings invite us to reflect on two profound themes, the mercy of our Lord and the call to humility. These passages remind us of the importance of recognizing our faults, seeking God's mercy and humbling ourselves after the example of Jesus Christ before the Father. In the first reading from the book of Ezekiel, we encounter a community of exiles in Babylon grappling with a fundamental question. Why should they suffer for the sins of their forefathers? Today, the focus is on personal responsibility rather than the baggage of ancestral sins on an individual. We cannot simply rely on the righteousness of our ancestors or be condemned forever for their past mistakes. We are accountable for our choices and have the capacity for both good and evil. On the one hand, the prophet conveys that when an upright person turns away from his righteous ways and commits sin, he brings about his downfall or moves away from the right standing with the God. On the other hand, when a sinner turns away from his sinfulness, he is restored to the right relationship with the God. The responsorial psalm reminds us that God's mercy is abundant and enduring. The falling from the right standing with God is due to pride, selfishness and arrogance, but returning to God's mercy is an act of humility and self-surrender. The second reading from the letter to the Philippines depicts the height of this humility as an antidote to pride and arrogance in the emptying act or kenosis of Jesus. The second reading is an ancient Christian hymn highlighting the contrast between Christ, the second Adam and the first Adam. The first Adam sought to be like God, tried evading death and exalted himself, resulting in humiliation. In contrast, Christ humbled himself, taking on the form of a servant and accepting death on the cross. Yet. God exalted him, giving him a name above all names. In the gospel passage, Jesus shares a parable about two sons. One of the sons initially refuses to work in that vineyard, but later has a change of heart and goes to work. On the one hand, the other son agrees to go, fails to follow through with his commitment. When Jesus asks the Pharisees which of the two sons did the father's will, they respond that it was the one who eventually obeyed. However, Jesus doesn't provide a direct answer to their question. Instead, he uses this parable to highlight a more profound truth. He points out that tax collectors and sinners might enter the kingdom of God before the Pharisees themselves. In many ways, we can relate to the first son who initially rejected his father's request but repented and obeyed. We too often find ourselves in a state of sinfulness, turning away from God's call. However, we can change our course of life through repentance and follow His will. While the parable may suggest that the one who eventually obeys did the Father's will, a closer analysis reveals that neither son fully obeyed. It becomes clear that true obedience to God should encompass our words and actions. We are challenged to go beyond mere lip service and outward appearances. Jesus emphasizes that authentic discipleship goes beyond professing Him as Lord with our words. It involves expressing our faith through our actions. 
He stresses that a genuine commitment to God's will requires more than verbal declarations. We must actively live out our faith. It is important to recognize that in our spiritual state, we cannot fully obey in both words and deeds by our own efforts. This is where the obedience of Jesus becomes invaluable to us. Through faith in Him, we are restored to the status of sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. Faith in Jesus' obedience serves as a bridge, assisting us in aligning our lives with God's will. As we reflect on these readings, remember that God's mercy is always available to us. We find forgiveness and life when we acknowledge our sins and turn to Him with the contrite hearts. We shall also remind ourselves that the power of baptism is always with us so that we can embrace the responsibility for our actions, recognizing that we have the ability to change and choose the path of righteousness. Let us live out our faith, not merely in words, but in our daily actions, expressing our love for Christ by doing the will of our Heavenly Father. May the grace of God empower us to live responsibly, humbly and transformed by the love of Christ. Amen. 